we're embarking on a tantalizing journey through Fukuoka City, a haven for ramen enthusiasts. Renowned as the ultimate destination for authentic ramen in Japan, Fukuoka promises an unforgettable experience for every palate. As a diehard fan of the rich flavors of ramen, I'm thrilled to share why this dish holds such a special place in my heart. Join me as we dive into the world of Fukuoka's legendary ramen. As I bid farewell to the bustling streets of Tokyo, bound for Fukuoka City, there's a palpable buzz of excitement. This is my maiden voyage to this ramen paradise, and the anticipation is sky high. Our flight from Tokyo to Fukuoka, a journey of about 2 hours and 15 minutes, will bring us to the epicenter of ramen culture, the vibrant Hakata district. Here in the heart of Fukuoka City, culinary adventures await. I think part of the fun in visiting a new city, especially one where the predominant language is not your own, is really trying to figure your way out. <laughs> and I have no idea where I'm going. The map says, go east. And I need an elevator desperately because look at what I have and look at what I gotta climb. But <sighs> part of the adventure. <laughs> That was not fun. <laughs> now let's hope getting to the destination is a little easier than that. It is hot in Fukuoka. I thought Tokyo was pretty steamy, but as soon as I got out of the station, the humidity just kind of really hit me. <laughs> so this is the only pants I brought. Most of what I have is shorts. So let's hope as soon as I get into the hotel, change from that to shorts then hopefully the experience is going to be very different from what I'm experiencing right now. With only two and a half days to immerse myself in Fukuoka's ramen scene, time is of the essence. The moment I set down my bags at the hotel, I hit the ground running. It's a race against the clock to explore, taste, and discover the rich tapestry of flavors that this city has to offer. Let's not waste a single minute on this gastronomic quest. I'm about to indulge my first ramen experience here in Hakata, Fukuoka City. And I'm a little nervous and a little excited at the same time because legend has it that this is probably among the best ramen on planet Earth. Okay, maybe an exaggeration, <laughs> but some of the best ramen in Japan is said to be here in Fukuoka. So my first impression is this is actually a very simple looking ramen. Um, it's just a really basic pork bowl. And my goal is to try and see just how well a simple pork ramen bowl is in this restaurant that's really known to locals. So here I go. <laughs> So just had my first piece of the pork. It's mild. The spicing is good. 
but not overly strong. The noodles are a little soft for me. I would prefer something maybe a little on the medium side, but the broth, the soup is actually pretty unique. So far, so good. I dig it. I'm just surprised at the generosity of pork. There's, I'm counting maybe around five or six pieces here, which in Tokyo is definitely not normal. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to be getting full in a much shorter time than I anticipated, which is always a good thing. <laughs> now that was good. I wouldn't say it's above the chain, like rocking great, but for my first experience here, what I enjoyed most about it was the generosity of pork. <laughs> so there was like ample pieces of pork, maybe around six, which in Tokyo is simply unheard of. In Tokyo, you're lucky if you get two pieces. So that was a good sign to start. We'll see what the remaining ramen experiences are going to be like in Fukuoka. It's funny that you see that sign right there, Seattle's best, and you're thinking coffee. And here, I'm just having pretty much an apple dry on a very hot, humid day. Now, normally, if this were the middle of the day, you probably would not be out here sitting, talking on a camera because the heat in Japan, the summers in Japan, August in Japan are just out of this world in terms of humidity. And sitting out here, middle of the day, you could potentially land a heat stroke. And the odds of that are very strong. So that said, um, what's my perspective? What's my opinion of Fukuoka so far? Well, I came here with, by and large, one mission in mind. And that one mission was to sample as much of the ramen culture here as possible. So far, I haven't really been convinced that the ramen here is out of this world astonishingly special. I've definitely had awesome ramen in Tokyo. I've had awesome ramen in Osaka and other prefectures. So I'm not yet won over. I'm not yet fully convinced <laughs> that right here, right now, this prefecture where I'm sitting, Fukuoka City, is actually the you know ramen capital of Japan. But you know, we still have another two days and I'm keeping my belly as empty as possible <laughs> to absorb as much ramen as possible because of course, ramen is fairly filling and two or three per day and I think that's probably it. In fact, one or two per day should probably be it but because our time frame here is so narrow, so short, we gotta eat as much ramen as we can <laughs> to share that experience with you. So we shall see and I'll report back to let you know how this is actually unfolding here in Fukuoka City, Fukuoka Prefecture, Japan. Cheers. So I'm on my way to a ramen store whose name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> I can't pronounce it because the name is in kanji, hiragana. It's in kanji and hiragana, neither of which are my strong points. These are two elements of the Japanese language. So I'm going pretty much from Google Maps and I'm hoping that will be sufficient. <laughs> but it's supposed to be one of the better ramen spots in this region, getting a fairly high regard from just about anybody who you ask about it. So the main challenge is first and foremost to maybe find a location. Should I cheat and hop in that taxi there or maybe just go on the bus? I don't know, we'll see. Now, generally speaking, the subway is extremely easy in Japan to take. The bus, on the other hand, <laughs> is a little challenging sometimes so i'm feeling 
maybe it's easier to just jump in a taxi. Generally speaking, taxis are prohibitively expensive in this country. You know, we're talking to the order of maybe one and a half times what it costs in my hometown of Toronto, maybe sometimes two, based on, of course, you know, Tokyo pricing. Uh, that said, maybe sometimes, sometime, maybe the convenience of just, you know, not having to really worry about that is probably worth it in my mind. So, you know, the goal of course is to get to the ramen spot, <laughs> enjoy the ramen spot, and of course, share that experience with you. So, in the spirit of adventure, what did I decide to do? <laughs> I decided to try and find the bus instead of hopping in a taxi or instead of hopping on the train. Um, you know, I think one of the elements of travel that's always front and center of my mind is to try different things. And I don't think I've ever really taken the bus before in Japan. Most of my stay has been centered largely in Tokyo. And of course, Tokyo is by and large a train city. In this part of Japan, Fukuoka city, in this part of just anywhere outside of Tokyo, the transportation system, the transit system might be a little different. So, you know, I was thinking maybe I should just, uh, you know, jump in a cab or whatnot. But in the spirit of travel, in the spirit of adventure, in the spirit of exploring, in the spirit of discovering something new, I think I'm just going to maybe hop on, <laughs> hop on the bus and try and, and try and find that. So we will see. Um, looking for the bus stop right now, it's a Hakata bus terminal, something along those lines. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> So I've arrived at what appears to be the ramen capital of Fukuoka city. I'm in a mall, it's called Canal Mall. And on this floor, the fifth floor, it's called Ramen Stadium. Now, what does Ramen Stadium mean? In my mind, when I hear the word stadium, it means competition. It means the best are competing for a win, right? So maybe translating that to, to ramen terms probably means this is the best of the best ramen spots available. Now, unfortunately, I can't pronounce a name because I don't know the kanji, I don't know the hiragana. I'll figure that out at some point in time. So I'm about to indulge in what might be, I'm hoping, one of my best ramen experiences in Japan. Fingers crossed, and I'm hoping I'm not setting the bar too high, but this is the second, and I believe, I think our goal is around four ramen spots. So this is number two, and uh, let's see. Money in hand, and it's time to pay. All right, so the ticket is here. And uh, we're ready to indulge. Let's see. Now, in Japan, heat stroke is actually extremely common. <laughs> so as a foreigner, not used to 38, 39 degrees, actually recently it's been fairly decent, but at the center point of the summer, it usually gets around that hot. That said, even if it's around 32 degrees in this country or in this part of Japan, the extreme humidity is not something that is common to people in North America. So I always try and keep myself as hydrated as possible by drinking as much cold fluids as I can. So here goes the excitement. Here goes what is supposed to be one of the most highly rated, highly coveted ramen in Fukuoka city. Again, I think I set the bar a little too high for myself. <laughs> so I'm a little worried about that, but let's see. Generous supply of meats. 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Definitely didn't disappoint. Nothing disappoints. As a matter of fact, my goal here is to eat as slowly as possible <laughs> to enjoy this as much as I can. I think what makes this fairly special is the uh, the broth. It has a very unique flavor. A little spicy, but spicy in a good way. Spicy that's just enough. I wish I had room for another bowl right after this. <laughs> I wish I could empty my plate here, give it back, and actually go back and request a second, try something maybe a little different. But I have limited capacity, as do most human beings, to consume ramen within a fairly short, narrow period of time. So the next ramen indulgence is gonna have to wait either until tomorrow or maybe a little later on today. But I think so far, two out of two, isn't too bad. How does this one rate to the first experience? I would say this is a couple notches up. I would say it most definitely deserves the praises it gets on Google. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I finally found a ramen place whose name I can pronounce. <laughs> Shin Shin is pretty easy. So this is actually another popular Akata style ramen. Now we're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing we did last time. I have no idea what the flagship, you know, item is on their menu. I'm gonna be choosing something at best, it's pretty random. And you know, ultimately the randomness ought to help me determine if it's awesome quality or not. Because, you know, in my humble opinion, if a ramen shop or just about any other restaurant can really ace their basic meal item, it means that their flagship item is just stratospheric. It's out of this world awesome. So I like to start with the very basic. And maybe if there's room in my belly, just maybe, if there's room on my belly, maybe kind of work up from there. <laughs> so that's where we're going to be starting. That's a strategy and we'll see how that works. So of course, on all the days to be pressed for time, it had to be the last day here in Fukuoka. It had to be the last day waiting for a ramen to be served literally one hour before departing. <laughs> so I'm hoping not to miss my Shinkansen. So I have to catch my Shinkansen in less than one hour. <laughs> I'm still gonna go back to the hotel, grab my luggage. Well, actually, first and foremost, I actually have to eat and enjoy, hopefully, fingers crossed, this ramen, then go back to the hotel, grab my luggage, and come back quickly to get to the Shinkansen. So time is very pressed. So I don't think this is going to be one of those meals where I'm sitting down and savoring every bite. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I will, of course, try my best to give my taste buds free reign, but time is tight and we gotta eat and run. So, waiting, waiting, waiting. This is your st standard? This is standard. This is basic. Okay. So, pretty basic, <laughs> pretty standard. We're not gonna be ordering their flagship. We're just gonna be getting something very basic, very simple. All right, so actually look, 
the price, 650. 650 is actually good. That's usually the case. So let's check it out. We're gonna, just, you know, it's almost like a blind taste test. <laughs> so let's see how this works out. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. <laughs> so I ordered something that's actually on this list here. There are four kinds of ramen. There is the standard, there's the boiled egg on the ramen, there's the green onion on the ramen, and there's spicy takana on the ramen. So my guess is the more items there is on the ramen, and listen, you're not talking to a ramen expert here. <laughs> you're not talking to a ramen ninja. You're not talking to a ramen uh, guru. This is just a guy that loves ramen on occasion. So forgive me if I mess up on the assumptions, but one of the assumptions that I have right now is the more items there is in the ramen, the more fancy it is. I ordered just the standard, meaning no bells and whistles, just basic ramen. <laughs> So we shall see. Well, the moment has arrived. My ramen is here. And I'm about to take my first quick bite or my first quick slurp, my first quick indulgence, <laughs> whatever it is. Let's try a slurp. Mm. Broth isn't too bad. I like my noodles a little thicker, a little Saltier. I think this is a little, little on the hard side, but still has a tasty theme to it. Meats. Not so generous with the meats. It is the basic, it is the original. My first impression. Definitely, I could tell that it is the basic. Um, it doesn't have that necessarily wow factor immediately from leaving the plate to entering my mouth. I would say it's by and large okay. The noodle content is fairly rich. So there's an abundance of noodles. There's an abundance, there's an abundance of other green stuff. But on the meat side of the fence, it is a little lacking. I think we had maybe two or so slices at most, but still fairly decent. Uh, this is probably what I call a hunger film. So if you do come in here and if you're starving, if you're hungry, this is probably the option. I couldn't imagine going with the other, I guess, souped up versions, you know, with the eggs and all those elements thrown in because I came in here fairly hungry. I'm a big guy um, and I am probably around 75% full already. And this again is just the basic. So if you're in, oh, look at that, some extra, some extra meat was hidden, was hiding somewhere in the bottom. <laughs> That's a bonus. It's kind of like finding that extra cookie, you know, in a cookie jar, or that extra treat that you thought you lost, you didn't have any more, and you just kind of came across it. Well, that's how I feel finding an extra piece of meat <laughs> in a ramen bowl. It's just a wonderful surprise. So my comment earlier about lacking the meat was probably trumped by this discovery of sorts <laughs> beyond the meat beyond the noodles beyond the um you know onions i couldn't tell you what those other elements are <laughs> so i'm giving you and i'm sharing with you a very innocent non-expert perspective on indulging in ramen here in fukuoka japan and my friends with that it's a wrap time is going so we gotta go Got to catch a Shinkansen in under 30 minutes. <laughs> so let's go. As our Fukuoka ramen journey comes to a close, I hope it has tantalized your taste buds and sparked your curiosity. If you've enjoyed this flavorful adventure, join me for more. Subscribe, share this video, and drop a comment. Your thoughts and experiences are always welcome. Until our next escapade, keep your spirit of exploration alive, stay hungry, keep wondering.